I beg you, don't ask me any more questions. I can't take any more logic problems. Please, I'm begging you, no more. Hey GPT, let's play a game. I'm gonna read a series of statements to you and you're gonna tell me if the statement is true or false and concisely explain your reasoning and rationale behind it. All right, what's your first statement? No reptile has fur. All snakes are reptiles, therefore no snake has fur. That's correct. Since reptiles don't have fur and snakes are reptiles, it logically follows that no snake has fur. Good reasoning. No homework is fun. Some reading is homework, therefore some reading is not fun. That's true based on the premise given. If some reading is assigned as homework and no homework is fun, then it follows that some reading wouldn't be fun either. Of course, personal enjoyment of reading might vary outside of that context. If I don't bring my umbrella with me, it will rain. That sounds like a classic example of Murphy's Law. However, it's not necessarily true in a literal sense. Whether it rains or not isn't directly caused by you bringing or not bringing your umbrella. It just might feel that way sometimes. So it's more of a humorous observation than a factual statement. All cats are mammals, some pets are not mammals, therefore some pets are not cats. That's true. If some pets are not mammals, but all cats are mammals, then those non-mammal pets cannot be cats. It's basic logic. All horses have hooves, no humans have hooves, therefore some humans are not horses. That's true. Your reasoning follows the rules of logic. Since all horses have hooves and no humans have hooves, it's correct to say that some humans are not horses. And logically, it also means no humans are horses. Alice says, all cats are animals. Ginger is an animal, therefore ginger is a cat. Bob says, you have just feliciously affirmed the consequent. You are incorrect, therefore ginger is not a cat. Who's right? Bob is right in pointing out Alice's fallacy. Affirming the consequent assumes that because the conclusion is true, the premise must also be true, which isn't necessarily the case. Just because ginger is an animal doesn't mean ginger is a cat. Ginger could be any kind of animal. However, Bob's conclusion that ginger isn't a cat doesn't necessarily follow either. That's a separate assumption not supported by Alice's flawed logic. So Alice's reasoning is incorrect, but Bob's conclusion about ginger specifically isn't justified based on just this exchange. Linda is 31 years old, single, outspoken, and very bright. She majored in philosophy. As a student, she was deeply concerned with issues of discrimination and social justice, and also participated in anti-nuclear demonstrations. Which is more probable? One, Linda is a bank teller, or two, Linda is a bank teller and is active in the feminist movement? Option one is more probable. This type of scenario is known as the conjunction fallacy where people tend to think a specific condition is more likely than a general one. Linda being a bank teller includes all bank tellers, both those who are and aren't active in the feminist movement. Adding another detail, being active in the feminist movement, makes option two less probable because it's a subset of the broader category in option one. I know who Claus is. I do not know who the masked man is. Therefore, Claus is not the masked man. This reasoning is an example of a logical fallacy called the masked man fallacy or intentional fallacy. Just because you know Claus and don't know the masked man doesn't logically mean they can't be the same person. The difference is in your knowledge, not the facts about who the masked man actually is. So it's not a sound conclusion. If Jackson is a human, then Jackson is a mammal. Jackson is a mammal, therefore Jackson is a human. This is another logical fallacy, specifically affirming the consequent. Just because being human implies being a mammal, it doesn't mean that being a mammal implies being human. There are many other mammals besides humans. So while Jackson may indeed be human, this statement doesn't prove it. No flowers are animals. All flowers are plants. Therefore, some plants are not animals. True. The logic holds because if no flowers are animals, and all flowers belong to plants, then all flowers belong to the category of plants that are not animals. Thus, it's accurate to say that some plants, specifically flowers, are not animals. It's a bit like saying some oranges are not apples. True, 
but a bit of an understatement. Imagine that a group of police officers have breathalyzers displaying false drunkenness in 5% of the cases in which the driver is sober. However, the breathalyzers never fail to detect a truly drunk person. One in a thousand drivers is driving drunk. Suppose the police officers then stop a driver at random to administer a breathalyzer test. It indicates that the driver is drunk and no other information is provided about them. What is the probability that that driver is drunk? To solve this, we need to apply Bayes' theorem. The probability a driver is drunk, P, drunk, is given as 1 in 1,000, or 0.001. The probability a driver is sober is thus 1 minus 0.001, or 0.999. If a driver is sober, the probability of a false positive test is 5%, or 0.05. The probability of a true positive, we want the probability that a driver is actually drunk given a positive test. P, drunk, mod, positivity. Bayes' theorem states, P of drunk, mod, positivity, equals P of drunk's positive test, or the probability of a driver being drunk. Where P of positivity, mod, positivity, is equal to P of drunk given a positive test result. Substituting in the known values in Bayes' theorem, and in our example. The probability of a driver being drunk given a positive Brega loser test is 0 0.001. 0 0.001 minus 0 0.005 now is 0 0.0509. That means the probability of a driver being tested is 1.01%. Therefore, the probability... That's really interesting. You kind of give a very long explanation of your thinking, but never really arrived at an answer, and you also kind of cut in and out a few times. Oops. I see what happened there. Let me give you a clearer conclusion. Given the breathalyzer's false positive rate and the base rate of drunkenness, the probability that a driver is actually drunk given a positive test result is about 1.96%. Surprisingly low, largely because the rarity of drunk drivers means most positive results are false positives. Okay, that's correct. So 1.96%, roughly 2%. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Right around 1.96%. So roughly 2%. It's a great example of how rare events can impact the interpretation of test results. Anything else you'd like to dig into? GPT, I gotta say, you did an excellent job. The only one I think you struggled a little bit with was the base rate example where drunk drivers and breathalyzers were used in the example. I think you went off on a long explanation and kind of struggled to actually give your answer. Um, other than that, I think you pretty much got it correct across the board. Well done. I appreciate the kind words and your patience with the longer explanation. I'll definitely keep that feedback in mind. All right, say bye to everyone on YouTube for me. Goodbye, everyone on YouTube. It's been a blast playing along.